The Kraft Foods Company presents Willard Waterman as the Great Gildersleeve. <laughs> the Great Gildersleeve is brought to you, partially transcribed, by the Kraft Foods Company. Are you using the new salad and cooking oil that was perfected in salad dressing headquarters? It's Kraft Oil, the most wonderful oil ever created for homemade salad dressings, for fine baking, and for frying. An exclusive Kraft process gives Kraft Oil a lighter body, and that's why it's different from ordinary oils. Kraft Oil blends faster and better with the other ingredients any recipe calls for. Get a bottle of lighter-bodied Kraft Oil when you're shopping tomorrow. Well, for a number of years now, the great Gildersleeve has enjoyed his position as city water commissioner. It carries a certain dignity and wields a certain influence. All in all, it's a happy situation, and the great Gildersleeve will go to great lengths to preserve it. Did you want me down here at the office this afternoon? Leroy, there's a lot to be done. The mayor said he'd be in before closing time, and we want to be on the ball. I don't get it. It looks good to have a relative working in the office who isn't on the payroll. Gosh, I could be out playing basketball. You can do this for your old uncle. The mayor likes to see a busy office. What do I do? You can stuff the water bills in the envelopes. And like the stamps. Before dinner? <laughs> Leroy, use a sponge. Okay. Right after I type a letter to our dog. Yes, yes. You know, we ought to name that dog. I'm writing him a letter and I don't even know who to send it to. If you have anything to tell the dog, phone him. I wouldn't want the mayor to come in and catch you wasting water department stationery on a great day. Well, I'll just write one page. Dear dog... Leroy, cut out the monkey shines. This is dog shine. Hey. <laughs> well, get that out of the typewriter. I don't want the mayor to see it. Okay. Uncle, why are you so afraid of the mayor? I'm not afraid of him. I respect him. He's my boss. And he can cut off your water, huh? Hey. <laughs> Young man, I'm the one who cuts off the water around here. I mind my business and he minds his. Why, the mayor wouldn't dare to... Hello, Mr. Mayor. Hello, Gildersleeve. Uh, mayor Twilligan, you know my nephew, Leroy. Oh, yes. Hello, Leroy. Hi. Having fun playing with the city typewriter? Yeah. Uh, Leroy is just down here helping me, Mr. Mayor. <laughs> A lot to do, you know. Oh? He's sending out statements to the customer. Is this one here? Dear dog. <laughs> well... Gildersleeve, I knew the water department had a lot of new consumers, but I didn't know we had any dogs on the books. Hey, I'm sorry, Mr. Mayor. Leroy was just writing a note to our great dame. Oh. Uh, Gildersleeve, you've never been to my house, have you? No, I haven't. I've driven past it, but I've never gotten inside. Well, I'd like to have you come over next Saturday night. Me? I'm giving a Valentine's Day party to a very select group. Oh, uh, besides our friends, Mrs. Terwilliger and I always invite a city official. Well. Uh, this year, it's your turn. Uh, thank you, Your Honor. Uh, you may bring somebody if you wish. How about me, Unc? Uh, Leroy, he means bring a girl. Uh, a lady. Uh, don't you, Mr. Mayor? Naturally. Uh, shall I dress? Black tie. Black tie? Is that all you're going to wear? <laughs> You're getting up in the world. <laughs> you think I'll drop in and tell Peavy about it? Hello, Peavy. Oh, hello, Mr. Gildersleeve. <laughs> what can I do for you today? Peavy, I just had a long talk with the mayor. Called you on your carpet, did he? Not at all. As a matter of fact, he wants the water commissioner to come to his home. Something wrong with the plumbing? <laughs> Peavy, stop it. 
He invited me to a Valentine party. Valentine? Man, my. It's going to be quite an affair, Phoebe. A lot of important people will be there. And only one city official. Me. You don't say. Yeah. The mayor says I can bring anybody I want. Of course, that presents a problem. Nobody wants to go with you. <laughs> anybody would jump at the opportunity to go. But I don't know whether to ask Grace Tuttle or Leela Ransom. Well, that is quite a decision to make. Uh, Peavy, whom would you take? I'd take Mrs. Peavy. I'd have to. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my goodness. Put yourself in my shoes. Very well. Now, you've worked for the mayor for 11 years, and he's never invited you to one of his parties. Don't sure. <laughs> but at last he invites you. Who would you take? I'd take a baseball bat and hit him right across the chart. <laughs> Phoebe, I'm serious. <laughs> Do am I, the stuck-up little potter pigeon? No. Will you lay off the mayor and help me with my problem? Well, seriously, Mr. Gildersleeve, I, I'd find it difficult to choose between Mrs. Ransom and Miss Tuttle. Yeah, they're both very attractive. Yes, indeed. They both dress well. They're both good dancers. I'm sure they are. Of course, Grace is more reserved. Mm, yes. Well, Leela is more the sentimental and romantic type. Yeah, I'm here to tell you. <laughs> you know how she comes in here, chucks you under the chin and says, Hello, Mr. Peavy, you cute little old man, you. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Gillis, please. If I were you, I'd say tut, tut to tuttle and run for ransom. <laughs> This? Leroy told me about you getting invited to the mayor. Well. Yes, sir. The water commissioner's going to make a big splash. Yeah. I guess I better phone and rent that same tuxedo I had New Year's Eve. Yes, if it's a big party, you better phone before all the stylish stouts are gone. Yeah, but first, I have to decide about my date. I'm weighing Miss Tuttle and Mrs. Ransom carefully. How much do they weigh? <laughs> Leroy, I'm trying to decide which one I should take to the party. Well, you can't go wrong with either one. Yeah, that's true, Bertie. I think Leroy might be a little more fun. That Miss Ransom can sure liven up a party. Yeah, she has a lot of spirit. <laughs> Remember the going away party you gave her and she saved it by dancing to Charleston? Yeah, Bertie, I wouldn't say she saved it. She certainly made it interesting. Yes, yeah. sir. You know... Leela might be a little too lively for the mayor and his wife. Oh, I don't know. The mayor hires some pretty snazzy-looking secretaries. That's business, Leroy. <laughs> <laughs> well, it is. The mayor is strictly business. And looking at it from all angles, Miss Tuttle might be the one to take to the mayor's party. Hey, what do you think, Bertie? Mr. Gillespie, you can't miss if you just shut your eyes and grab. Well, this is no grab bag, Bertie. Yeah, I think I'll call Grace right now. Yes, sir. It won't hurt to take a level-headed girl. Show the mayor I have my feet on the ground. As far as Leela's concerned, she doesn't even have to know I'm going to the party. Hello? Grace, this is Throckmorton. Oh, yes, Throckmorton. I don't suppose anybody's asked you to a Valentine's party. Just how do you mean that? <laughs> what I mean is, if you're not busy Saturday evening... Are you? Well, a long line is already forming in front of my door, but what do you have in mind? Perhaps I can move you up. Well, the mayor has honored me with an invitation to his home, and I'd like to have you go with me. That's wonderful, Throckmorton. I'd love to. You're very sweet to think of me. Well, I've given it a lot of thought. It's formal, I hope. Oh, yes, indeed. Very. I'm just dying to wear an evening dress again. Yeah, I like to wear them, too. Yeah, a tuxedo, I mean. <laughs> Let's say I pick you up around 7 Saturday. I'll be ready. Oh, this is so exciting. I'm glad you're looking forward to it. Goodbye, Grace. Goodbye, Throckmorton. You all set with Miss Tuttle, Unc? Yep. Glad I called her. Being a school teacher, she'll fit right in with the Tony people the mayor will invite. She has dignity, poise, 
charm. Yeah, and if the party starts dying, you can send for Mrs. Lansom to come to the Charleston. <laughs> <laughs> George, I've got a lot of work to do today. Uh, before I clear the desk, I think I'll see what's in the morning paper. Well, here's a big announcement of the mayor's party. Summerfield's elite anticipating Mayor Terwilliger's dinner dance. Hey, it's a pretty important chindic. Gets it right up before it happens. Yeah, let's see. They haven't listed the guests. Drop Martin. Uh-oh. It's Leela. Come in, Leela. I wonder if she read about the party and came down here for a reason. Good morning, Trot Martin. Hello, Leela. Aren't you out a little early this morning? Well, I had some shopping to do. Yeah, but the stores aren't open. Well, I know you won't mind if I wait here until they are. Oh, no. Delighted to see you. Sit down. <sighs> Thank you. I see you're reading the morning paper. The paper? I read it hours ago. Uh oh. I suppose you noticed the mayor's giving a party Saturday night. Oh, he is? Oh, it's right there under your nose. Summerfield's a lead anticipating mayor to Williger's dinner dance. Well, well, well. So the mayor's giving a party. How about that? You sound like it's news to you. Well, that's why they print newspapers. News. Talk, Martin, aren't you invited? It's a strange thing, Leela. I've never been to the mayor's house. Are you going this time? As long as I've worked for the mayor, I've never been in his house. Are you invited? Eleven years. I've never once been in his house. Rock Martin, are you going to his party? The mayor has a party every year, and I've never been there. Rock Martin, did he invite you to the party Saturday night? Answer yes or no. You well, Leela. Oh, I shouldn't have asked you that. I'm sorry, Rock Martin. I should know if you're going to Mayor Terwilliger's party, you'd have asked me long ago. <laughs> After all, it's a Valentine party. Rock Martin. Now, Leela, perhaps you shouldn't sit on the arm of my chair. This is a business office. Rock Martin. Yes, Leela. Am I your valentine? Well... Gildersleeve! Oh! No, oh, Miss Mayor! Uh, yes, I, uh, I hope I'm not interrupting the flow of business in the water department. You? No, no, not at all. I was just chatting with a friend of mine. Oh. Well, glad you dropped in, Mrs. Ransom. What's wrong, Martin? Aren't you going to introduce me to his honor? You? Yes, excuse me. Uh, Mary Twilliger, allow me to present... Mrs. Leela Ransom. How do you do, Mrs. Ransom? Oh, Mr. Mayor, I'm delighted to meet you. Thank you. Uh, now, Gildersleeve, about these new water mains... Well, I've seen your picture in the paper countless times. Uh, naturally. As I was about to say, Gildersleeve... And now uh... that I see you in person, your pictures don't do you justice. Uh, oh? You look so young for a mayor. Uh, oh, well... <clears throat> <laughs> uh, you were speaking about the water mains, Mr. Mayor. Gildersleeve, you're interrupting the lady. I... <laughs> oh, uh, sorry. Well, I'm the one who's interrupting your business, but I hope you don't mind a girl telling you how distinguished you look, Your Honor. And uh, if you don't mind, permit me to say Commissioner Gildersleeve has a very charming friend. <laughs> oh, Mr. Mayor. Oh, brother. Well, I really must be skipping along. I never did believe a woman should just drop into an office and take up a man's time, even if Throck Martin is my best beau. So that's how it is, eh, Gildersleeve? Well, I've known Leela for quite a while, Mr. Mayor. Wonderful. I suppose we'll be seeing you at my party tomorrow night, Mrs. Ransom? Why, Mr. May, I'd be just tickled to death. I'm not tickled, but I'm dead. <laughs> the great guilt.
Gildersleeve will return in just a moment. If your family is fond of cookies, better listen while I tell you about a special recipe from the Kraft Kitchens that makes just about the tastiest cookies that ever filled a cookie jar. They're called oatmeal chewies, and besides being economical, they're wonderfully easy. The shortening you use is Kraft Oil, the liquid shortening created by Kraft. An exclusive, super-fining process gives Kraft Oil a lighter body, so it blends faster and better when you mix it with other ingredients. To make oatmeal chewies, combine two cups quick-cooking oatmeal, one cup brown sugar with one-half cup of easy-to-measure Kraft Oil. Let this mixture stand at room temperature for an hour. Then add a beaten egg, one-half teaspoon salt, one-half teaspoon vanilla, and one-half cup coconut. After mixing well, place level tablespoons of the dough on cookie sheets that have been oiled with Kraft Oil. Bake in a moderate oven for 12 to 15 minutes or until lightly browned. Remove immediately from the cookie sheets, and you'll have three dozen of the grandest cookies you've ever made. For a copy of Kraft Oil's delicious recipe for oatmeal chewies, write Kraft Kitchens, Kraft Foods Company, Chicago 90, Illinois. Kraft Kitchens. Kraft Foods Company, Chicago 90, Illinois. And tomorrow, be sure to get a bottle of Kraft Oil, the most wonderful oil ever created for baking, frying, and salad dressing. Lighter-bodied Kraft Oil. Well, it seems something always comes along to upset the great Gildersleeve's apple cart. If something doesn't come along, he manages to upset it himself. Aunt, how did you happen to invite two girls to the same party? Leroy, I didn't invite both of them. I invited Miss Tuttle. Didn't I, Bertie? All I know is I saw Miss Ransom in the market and she said you was taking her. Well, the mayor put me on the spot. The minute I introduced him to Leela, he assumed she was going to the party with me. Why didn't you just tell the mayor you already had a date? Leroy, it's not too easy to say you have another date in front of Leela. <laughs> she's counting big on going, all right. Yeah. She was telling me in the market what she's going to wear. Oh? Miss Anson said she was wearing the same outfit that knocked them dead last year at the Mardi Gras. Where's that? Leroy, that's a big blowout in New Orleans every year. Yeah? What did she wear, Bertie? Black lace over peach-colored satin. Leroy. Okay. Yeah. Go on, Bertie. That's it. Black lace over peach colored satin and peeping over a black lace fan. Well, <laughs> Leela always did know how to dress. When Miss Ransom glides in, I can see that party stop. She's going to knock them dead peeping over that black lace fan. Yeah, all right, Bertie. Miss Gilsey, you know Miss Ransom's going to do that party? Yes, Bertie. That's right. She's going to knock them dead peeping over that black lace fan. <laughs> Well, there must be some way out of this. Why don't you get smart and get out of town? (laughs) Don't be silly. I got a good excuse for you. What is it? Tell your girls our great Dane is homesick and have to take him back to Canada. (laughs) Don't be ridiculous. There's only one thing to do. Yeah? Just go over to Leela's and tell her the truth. Truth never hurt anybody. Well, in case the girls don't know that, which hospital will you be in? (laughs) Leroy. I should have done this in the first place. I'll just explain to Leela that I had a date with Grace all along. What can she do? I wonder what she will do. Well, I still say the truth never hurt anybody. Yeah, nice quiet day. What's wrong, Mark? Hello, Leela. Oh, I didn't expect to see you this afternoon. Yeah, I want to talk to you about something. Uh, may I come in? For a minute. You're just in time to take me to the beauty parlor. So before you spend the money, let me tell you why I came over. What's happened, Frock Martin? Well, Leela, Leela, I can't take you to the mayor's party. Would you mind repeating that? Yes, I would. It was hard enough to say the first time. Well, why this 
change of heart, I'd like to know. There's no change of heart. It's just that I never did ask you to go to the party. Why, truck, Martin. When the mayor met you in the office, he just assumed I was bringing you. As a matter of fact, I had already made other plans. Who is she? Not that I wouldn't just soon take you, Leela. Or even rather. Who is she? Well, Leela, when I don't take you out, you know who I take out. Yeah, I mean... Shrock Martin, I think Grace Tuttle is a lovely girl. Oh, I knew you'd understand. Of course I do. But I wonder if his honor, Mayor Terwilliger, will. Mayor Terwilliger? Your boss. You will... He's expecting you to bring me to his party. Well, I know he suggested And it, if but... I were you, I'd consider that a command performance. What? <laughs> what would the mayor say if he knew you were disobeying his orders and trying to push me out for some other girl? Yeah, but Leela... Oh, I'd hate to see you make a faux pas that might blight your entire career. Oop. Leela, we're just wasting our time talking. Oh? Come on, let's get you to the beauty parlor. <laughs> Well, there's only one thing left to do. Break the date with Grace. I'll just tell her the truth. I'll explain that the mayor invited Leela, and he's expecting me to bring her. I had nothing to do with it. Throckmorton. Hello, Grace. What a surprise. Won't you come in? Thank you. Let me take your hat. No, thanks. I'll just hold it. Uh, Grace, I don't imagine the mayor's party means too much to you. You have your good books and all. Well, I'm certainly looking forward to going. Grace, I must be honest with you. I'm sorry, but I can't take you. Oh? I thought it best to come and put my cards on the table. You don't have one up your sleeve, do you? (laughs) Grace, you know me better than that. Go on, Throckmorton. You're dealing. Well, it just happens that the mayor made arrangements for me to bring somebody else to his party. I had nothing to do with it. I understand how those things can happen. That's all right. Yeah, at least you had the fun of planning to go. Oh, it's just been ducky. Yeah. <laughs> I uh, hope this hasn't put you out too much. Oh, not at all. Of course, I've spent my next six months' salary for a party dress, but that's all right. You, well, maybe they'll take it back. They don't, and worst comes to worst, I can always eat it. <laughs> Looks like ice cream anyway. Hey. Grace, I'm sorry about this. I wouldn't have had it happen for the world. Forget it, Throckmorton. Oh, Grace, you're a brick. I suspect I'm a little batty, too. Well, goodbye. Uh, uh, Throckmorton. Yes? Forgive me for being a bit curious, but is the girl you're taking a relative of the mayor? A relative? Oh, no. Just a friend of the family, I suppose. Well, he just met her. Yeah, I mean... Yes? Oh, what the heck. You'll find it out anyway. It's Leela. Oh, handsome ransom again. She was in my office the other day when the mayor came in. Does she make a practice of visiting your office? You don't know. She just happened in and the mayor assumed I was taking her to the party. Why? Well, he thought she was my girlfriend. Oh, this was after you asked me to go? Well, yes. Why didn't you lay your cards on their table? Well... Drop, Morton. I'm going to trump your ace. What? You're taking me to that party. Oh, Well, in 30 minutes, I'm due at Leela's. The terrible thing is I'm also due at Grace's. You know what a nightmare this night's going to be. You shall stop in TV's for a cigar. And at the rate I'm smoking, I'd better make it a box. Hello, Phoebe. Oh, hello, Mr. Gildersleeve. What can I do for you this evening? More cigars, Phoebe. Very well. Hmm. You cut quite a figure in that tux. Yeah. Which young lady did you invite to the marriage party? Both of them. How's that? <laughs> I invited Grace, and then the mayor saw me with Leela and suggested I bring her. What could I do? Well, it's a little late to talk about what you could have done. The point is, what are you going to do? 
TV. This is the worst predicament I've ever been in. You don't change. I explained the situation to both girls, but neither one would let me off the hook. <laughs> you big fish like you should be able to get off the hook. <laughs> oh, all right, Peavy. Give me a strong Coke. Okay, huh? If I could just think of some good reason for not even showing up. Like an emergency in the water department. Hey, Peavy, do that again. You want two Cokes? No, turn on that carbonated water. I want to hear it fizzle. Well, if it amuses you. Right, George, that water gives me an idea. You going to jump in the reservoir? <laughs> no, I have a bold plan. I'm going to create an emergency right here in your drugstore. Uh, uh, now, wait a minute, Mr. Gilbert. Yeah, I'll turn on all the faucets behind your fountain, bang in the pipes with a hammer, and then get the mayor on the phone. My, my. You'll hear the water running, and I'll tell him I can't come to his party because I'm taking care of an emergency. Right, George, this is the best idea I ever had. No, no, I wouldn't say that. What if your mayor finds out? Uh, stand aside, Peavy. I'll turn on the faucets and get on the phone. Mr. Gildersleeve, you're making a mistake. There. Uh, doesn't that sound like a broken water main? It sounds like trouble, all right. Uh, now I'll call the mayor. This will get me out of the dates, and the mayor will respect me for staying on the job. Hello? Is Mayor Twilliger there? He isn't? Oh, hello, Mrs. Twilliger. This is Water Commissioner Gildersleeve. Mr. Gildersleeve. Uh, Mrs. Twilliger, when the mayor comes home, tell him I won't be able to come to the party. Good evening, P.B. I have to stay on duty. What's going on? Why is all the water running? Uh, well, uh, There's a big emergency at the water department, Mr. Twilliger. You can hear me at work. I, I can't believe my eyes. Yeah, that's right, Mr. Twilliger. So if you'll express my regrets to the mayor. You say he went down to P.B.'s drugstore? Gildersleeve! Oh! Ooh. Great Gildersleeve will be right back. There's a wonderful new oil that does wonderful new things for homemade salad dressings, baking, and frying. It's Kraft Oil, the oil that's super fine to make it lighter bodied. Because Kraft Oil is a lighter bodied oil, it blends faster and better with other ingredients, makes smoother, tastier French dressings, makes cakes and cookies that stay fresh and moist day after day, gives fried foods a tender crispness. Better begin using lighter body craft oil in your kitchen. Get a bottle tomorrow. Ladies and gentlemen, this is Boy Scout Week. So it seems a good time to congratulate the many fine American families everywhere who have encouraged the Scout movement to the point where today its membership is at an all-time high. Yes, sir, there are more than 3,250,000 Cub Scouts, Boy Scouts, Explorers, and Adult Leaders. And Leroy... Yeah? I want to congratulate you on your 43rd birthday. 43rd birthday? Me? Yeah, as a member of the Boy Scouts, my boy. This week you're celebrating your 43rd birthday. Oh, sure. Hey, Unc. Yes? We need leaders. Have you ever considered joining the Boy Scouts? Yeah, after what happened to me tonight, I've even thought of joining the Foreign Legion. <laughs> your two dates? Well, the mayor found escorts for them. They're probably having a wonderful time. What do you suppose the mayor's going to say to you tomorrow? Not a thing, my boy. No? He said it all tonight. <laughs> Good night, folks. <laughs> Gildersleeve is played by Willard Waterman. The show is written by John Elliott and Andy White and is partially transcribed. Included in the cast are Walter Tetley, Lillian Randolph, Mary Schiff, Shirley Mitchell, Stanley Farrar, and Dick LeGrand. Musical compositions by Jack Meekin. This is John Heaston saying goodnight for the Kraft Foods Company, makers of the famous line of Kraft quality food products. Be sure to listen in next week and every week for the further adventures of The Great Gildersleeve.
What goes into a perfect sandwich? Maybe it's roast beef or savory baked ham. Whatever your favorite, the perfect meat sandwich needs the perfect mustard. Kraft prepared mustard. Well, when you add a little mustard, you add a lot of tang. You can take your choice of two kinds of Kraft mustard. Mild Kraft mustard is smooth and delicately spiced. Or if you like your mustard with extra pep, try Kraft mustard with snappy horseradish added. Keep them both on hand and keep everyone in the family happy. Next time, get Kraft prepared mustard. <laughs> Tonight, play You Bet Your Life on NBC.